Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on advanced audio techniques using Soundtrack Pro. The goal here is to show you some of the secrets that you may not yet have discovered inside Soundtrack. And if you have not yet discovered Soundtrack, you're missing a treat because the audio capability inside Soundtrack is far in excess of what we can do inside Final Cut Pro. And I want to show you how to take and make the most of it. Now, if you haven't had a chance to look at Soundtrack Pro, be sure to review one of our introductory webinars that walks you through the interface and how to get stuff working. This is an advanced class, and we want to show you some of the advanced techniques that can make your life a lot easier when it comes to editing audio. The goal for this session is to show you a variety of advanced techniques in Soundtrack Pro that can speed your audio editing and your mixing. Specifically today, I want to cover sending files from Final Cut Pro to Soundtrack Pro, preference and file management in Soundtrack Pro, editing and exporting operations inside Soundtrack Pro, plus exporting multiple audio tracks from Final Cut Pro. Also, I want to show you how to conform multiple sequences from Final Cut sent to Soundtrack for mixing. And as I said, we'll talk about exporting from Soundtrack Pro. Let's start first with taking a look at how we send files from Final Cut Pro, because if you don't understand how to start, all the advanced technology in the world won't help. In the past, I used to make a difference between an audiophile project and a multi-track project. Now, I send everything to a multi-track project, since it's easy to repair a single file from within a multi-track project. When you're sending files from Final Cut to Soundtrack, there are four things that don't transfer. Final Cut Pro audio filters, stereo pan settings, although mono pan settings do transfer, audio fade in and fade out transitions, though crossfades and keyframes do transfer, and audio generators, specifically tone. Let me show you how sending works. This is a recent episode of Two Real Guys, which is a podcast that Norman Holland on the left and myself on the right host that talks about the aesthetics of visual storytelling as opposed to the technology. This is an edit from episode 12, which posted a couple of weeks ago. I want to send all this over to Soundtrack for a sound mix, and we'll be working with pieces of this throughout the exercises today. What you do is you select your, your sequence inside the browser. It is possible to send directly from the timeline, but I found the browser to be a lot more reliable. Select the sequence inside the browser, go up to File, go down to Send To. Now, there's three options in, in how we can send a file. We could send it to an audio file project, a multi-track project, or a Soundtrack Pro script. Audio file projects are one and only one audio file, and because I'm sending a group, the audio file is grayed out. Soundtrack Pro scripts are specifically designed to modify the source files stored on your hard disk, and we don't want to mess with source files, so I recommend that you avoid scripts until you really understand how Soundtrack Pro works. Well, although it seems like we have three choices, the best choice is to send it to a Soundtrack Pro multi-track project. When I do, it opens up the Save dialog, and we get to give this a name. We get to give it a location on where we're going to send it. Most of the time, the default settings are fine, and that's what you're looking at here. But sometimes you may not want to open Soundtrack immediately. Say it's the end of the day and you want to send the file to Soundtrack so you can start work on it first thing in the morning in which case you would uncheck the first line, which means that you'll be able to output your file so that Soundtrack can read it, but you won't start Soundtrack the application. Most of the time, also, you want to see your videos so you know how to spot your effects into the video, but sometimes when you're working with something that the video is not important, and a lot of my audio podcasts is the case, then you don't want to include background video. This means that the audio will transfer, but the video will not. Another good reason not to do this is if you know that you're looking at a really long render session to be able to see anything, you may not want to have the background video render while you're waiting for it to get into Soundtrack. The one checkbox that should always be checked, and in fact I would argue with Apple that it should not have been a choice on our part at all, is this bottom one. You always want to make sure that Save Project with Latest Clip Metadata is always checked. So leave this one checked, never uncheck it. Be sure to include video if it's relevant for your project, and as I said, the default settings most of the time will be correct. I would normally click Save, but it's going to take about two to three minutes to export this project. I've already done that, so I'll save us the time for right now. But you would then click Save, and it would now output all the files and create a small mini-movie that would then be visible inside Soundtrack Pro. One note on this movie, by the way, Final Cut creates what's called a reference movie. Reference movies, because you're using them on the same system that created the movie, are perfectly okay. But if at any point you delete any of the render files, the reference movie breaks. 
If you need to work on this project for a long period of time, it's better to create your own standalone movie and import that into Soundtrack rather than create the background video here because then when you import the movie, you could generate it as a self-contained movie, and that way it'll last forever. Reference movies will last only as long as all the elements in it, including render files, remain online on your system.